Hi, I'm Steve. Welcome back to the Maker's Cave. And it is the middle of January, beginning of the new year. And the big project for this year is, as you probably read on the title of the video, we're going to be building a 3D printed R2-D2. Um, over the holidays, um, I'm getting over a cold, as you can probably hear. I was doing what everybody does when they're sick in bed. We always cruise on the internet. And I discovered a gentleman, um, Mr. Baddeley. Uh, I forget exactly how I stumbled across him, probably on Facebook, but he has a Patreon account, and if you join his Patreon, which I'll put a link below, and if you're into building robots, especially Star Wars droids, you should really check out his Patreon and join. But either way, he has taken all the Star Wars droids, and he's made them into 3D printable parts. Um... It's just amazing. He has several different versions. I'm doing the Mark IV dome, which is a, which is a static dome, um, which means under the pies and the top open up or anything like that. So I'm gonna start off with this to get my feet wet, and then I'm gonna move on to one of his other domes that actually have all kinds of servers and everything. And that's what's great, is he has everything cut so you can put motors and servos and the dome can turn. Um, he has them cut so they can be done on a printer as small as 200 by 200 millimeters by 200 millimeters or he also has them cut so if you have a 500 millimeter by 500 millimeter you can do things all in one shot like if you have a large printer like that you can print this dome uh all in one shot uh as you if you've watched the channel you know i have a larger uh, 3d printer coming in later on in april the elegu orange storm which is one meter <laughs> by one meter by one meter so I think when that comes, I'm going to reprint this dome all in one piece. But meanwhile, I'll know what I'm getting myself into by doing, doing this one. Now, I have printed out all the parts. Um, it wasn't that bad. I used the bamboo uh, P1P, which was terrific. Uh, it really did good quality. Uh, I printed it out using their um, strength profile for the, for the PETG uh, filament. Okay, this dome here comes in five pieces. And then there's the finished dome, which also comes in other five pieces. And there's this ring right here, which is five rings going around. And I glued the ring up, and then I started to do these because uh, I got carried away. I forgot I wanted to show you guys how I'm building this. But I was so excited that I just simply forgot. So what I'm using is, uh, once I got all the pieces put together, there are several ways you can join the parts. You can use regular CA glue although I'm not sure if that would be strong enough. Uh, he recommends using, like, you go into Amazon to get one of those inexpensive 3D pens, which you put the filament in, and it melts the, uh, the, the patchy filament, and you can, you know, weld these seams in here. Okay, so you can weld them in. I also joined his Facebook group, and some people had mentioned uh, by Caseway, it's their vinyl adhesive SC... 200, which is specifically made for um, vinyl PVC ABS and specifically PET G. So I use some of that, and as you can see, it's really did a good job at bonding these pieces together. Probably see some of the glue on here. We'll sand that out. And here's all the pieces bonded together. Again, you can see some of the glue overspill, but we can sand that out. Now, the disadvantage to printing this out in pieces, like I did not one whole dome, is you're going to have to fill some se seams in. And, of course, you finish off the, the glue lines, uh, you know, polish them off. So I do have some Bondo uh, lightweight body filler, which we'll use for, you know, filling in some of the gaps, the seams, and sanding it, uh, which will give me good practice for, you know, like I said, some of the other pieces later on. But if you print out the one piece dome, if you've got a large enough 3D printer, you don't have to worry about that. You just need to sand down some of the imperfections for printing, uh, which the bamboo did very little of. Um, so I'm hoping the Elegoo, when I get it, is just as good. So what we're going to do now, oh, also, if you are going to go this route with the caseway stuff, um, first off, be careful opening it up. There is a metal tab in here when it ships to you, and you have to pry that off. Uh, it's a sealer cap. Be very careful pulling it off so you don't spill everything all over the place. It's also a very potent chemical, so you want to wear gloves. And you, without a doubt, want to wear a respirator. So let me tell you, I can smell this stuff through the closed container. So you don't want to be breathing that in. So I think what we're going to do 
is we're going to finish assembling the dome right here. So why don't you just follow me along as I do that. Put our gloves on. I have the dome pieces labeled in the back so I know exactly where they go. Okay, I glued it all up. I had to muscle some pieces together and hold them for almost like a minute and a half while the uh, uh, <laughs> adhesive took, took hold. Um, it was a little, little tougher than I thought, but not that tough. Uh, I did have to use some clamps. <laughs> I had to use some clamps uh, to hold this into the groove for the bottom ring, and that worked rather nice. Now, let me turn this upside down. Right here is one of the seams. If I had to build this head all over again, I would have taken this as tail file and I would have put two blocks on each side of the seam. So then I could have used a clamp to hold these together. It still came out pretty good. Look, I mean, with a 3D printer, we got an R2D2 dome. So now what I'm gonna do, despite my manhandling. I'm going to leave this as is for a couple hours and then we'll come back and we'll start fitting the upper dome in. I want to make sure that uh, the adhesive has a good chance to dry. It's been a couple hours. The dome is dried up rather nice with the adhesive. It's nice and solid. Now we're going to take these pie slices here for the top put these around all the way with, again, with the adhesive, and we'll let that dry. Um, oh, you know what I'm in the beginning? You're probably wondering if I'm making an R2-D2, why did I use black? That's because technically I'm not making an R2-D2. Um, I'm a Star Trek guy, as you know, if you watch your channel, you know, but Star Wars, I love the droids. The only thing I really like about Star Wars are the droids. So I'm really in favor of um, the Imperial droids. And there's one Imperial droid that was in Return of the Jedi, R2, Q5. He's also in some of the uh, side stories and everything else. But he was a black and bronze uh, version of R2-D2. So that's why I use black, because that's actually what I'm making. I'm making an R2, Q5. So let's get gluing. Pie section is all done. Uh, it's been a couple days. Uh, it was starting to snow when I was putting this together and this, so uh, we took a couple days off until the snow cleared up. And that actually was kind of fortuitous because I had ordered in the, this right here, which is a 3D pen. Because uh, some people while building this have actually joined the pieces together using a 3D pen, a 3D pen, a 3D pen, which I'll show you in a second. Basically all it does, it's a pen, it heats up really hot, you put your film in it and you can run it either, you know, make stuff yourself, you know, by being strands, or you can attach it to already printed material. And it's supposed to act like a bonding agent. So where I'm kind of curious to see if that'll work. So uh, uh, let's get this out of the box and set up and then we're gonna see if we can use this to attach the upper plate to here. Get this out. Also, it does come with some filament so I can show you how it works. As you can see, it's not very big. It's PLA, which we'll test with, but I'm actually going to use, I got um, some leftover PET G here that I'll use for bonding the dome together. Let's choose the red. One end goes in here. We'll plug it in. Now, much like a 3D printer, 
to lube the filament. You want to cut it on a diagonal. Here's a little display screen. It, it's already set for PLA. Target temperature it says is 175. These two buttons decrease the temperature. The buttons on the side here, this one advances the filament and this one would with withdraw the filament. We're going to take our filament right in the back here. We have to wait for it to come up in temperature. All right, it's at 175, 175. Now I'm going to gently push on the back here while I push feed. Oh, wow. I can hear the motor turning. So let's see what happens here. Yeah, there we go. Oh, they must have used some light in there. All right, there we go. Let's try it some more. My name. Not very well, but there you go, it's in focus now. But it is my name. So now what I'll do is I will back out the filament and we'll put the pet G in there. I'll put a link below to where you can get this if you want. It's out now. Pet G likes a little warmer of a temperature, so I'm going to take it up to about. See if it'll go up to like 220. All right, I'm feeding in the pet G until it starts to come out because I want to get rid of that red PLA. Oh, there we go. What I think I'll do is cut a small section of this off. This over here. But now I think what we're going to do is there is I'm not in the directions when you do this there's a key there's a slot right here in the top here so this can only go on one way so you align it up right on this section I'm going to use some tape to hold it into place because what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this upside down to be able to get into it to see how well the pen actually uh, is going to work with this. And we'll change the view for you. This rim right along in here is where this top cap goes on. So that's where I'm going to try and see how well this works. Not the cleanest weld, but it seems to be holding. So I guess I'll continue to go around and see how well it does. I went around, and as you can see, I did some more welding and I have to admit I'm very impressed with the holding capabilities. Uh, there, were, there was a certain section, where was it at? Right here, where the lip was not fitting very well. I had to squeeze the dome and push down at the same time uh, to get it to mate and then I welded it real quick. And I had my doubts on whether the weld would actually hold that much tension. And it did. I'm going to go back in with the pet G adhesive. And where I didn't put a mechanical bond on here with the pet G gun, I'm going to back it up with uh, chemical adhesive. I stumbled over my words quite a bit there. I'm still battling my cold. Um, so that's what we're going to do now is I'm just going to... Uh, uh, go off camera and I'm going to run around the rest of that scene with the 
actual uh, adhesive, and that should make one heck of a bond for our RT dome. All right, be right back. While we're letting everything dry, I was looking over how the dome goes on here, and this is a close-up of one of the uh, two slices, pie slices that go together on top of the main dome. And as you can see, hopefully, there's a big gap in there. So I was wondering, using the 3D pen, I can go in there Now that gap is filled up. I still have to sand it, but I think this will be better than doing Bondo to fill those gaps. We'll have to find out when we go ahead and sand. And right here, there's a big old gap. Of course, it's magnified, so it looks really big to you. But it is fairly big, so you know what? Let's try this again. Wow, like I said, it's going to take some sanding, but that's a lot better than Bondo, I think, if it'll work. That's pretty cool. So I'm just going to go around the rest of it and see if I have any other gaps I can fill up. So I went through with the uh, Caseway adhesive, the SC200, uh, and put it on all the seams that did not have the 3D pen bonding. Again, this is really cool. Um... Here it is, here's a dome. I'm gonna do this project for you guys in very small doses. So we've got the dome assembled now. Uh, I have all the uh, other things that need to be put in, in the slots and all. I have one hollow lens printed out, but I have to do two more because there's three of them. So I gotta print out two more of these. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're gonna start tackling the smoothing of this, uh, which will be the sanding. And um, if the sanding goes pretty quick on that video, we'll also do the priming and maybe the initial uh, gloss black. Um, I thought it was coming loose, but it's not. It's rock solid. Uh, we'll, like I said, if we get the priming done in that next video, uh, we'll also put the uh, gloss black covering on it. So stick with me. This is going to be, like I said, a... Uh, no, not a year long, because I'm actually hoping to take this to Wonderfest, but uh, they're going to be very small videos, so you can digest them. And like I said, I'll put a link below to where you can join um, Mr. Baddeley's uh, uh, Patreon forum, uh, so you can get these files yourself and print them out, uh, or any of the other droids. I mean, he's got that little mouse uh, droid that you saw in Star Wars, the, the one that Chewbacca scared, which is a real simple build to start out with. Um, yeah, so if you have any comments on this, uh, be sure to put them below. Uh, I hope you like, if you like this video, make sure you give it a like. I appreciate that. Um, other than that, until the next build of something we're going to be doing, I'm Steve. Thanks for stopping by the Maker's Cave, and I'll see you at the next thing you do. Mm -hmm.